There are two existing pits on site today, the Yellow Pine Pit and the West End Pit that's right over this ridge. The Yellow Pine Pit will be the first pit that we remine. So we remine both of them. Perpetua Resources took us on a tour of the Stibnite Gold site after submitting a new alternative that would reduce the volume of mined minerals by 10%, eliminate a 168-acre storage facility, and reduce the Hangar Flats pit by 70%. That would be a new pit built on an existing hazardous area with tailings. We've been able to identify some improvements to the project that improve water temperature, improve water quality, and reduce the size of the overall footprint. But the Idaho Conservation League believes Perpetual Resources moved the goalpost by submitting this alternative after the public comment period, and the Forest Service will ask for another environmental impact statement with a public comment period in 2021. None of the uh, potential effects of this new alternative have been analyzed, and we have some serious concerns about water and air quality and fisheries hopefully those will be addressed in this supplemental environmental impact statement the small town of yellow pine overwhelmingly supports the project for business interests but also because they call perpetua a good neighbor they were surprised when the company made plans to reroute the road to Stibnite away from the river and where they like to recreate after a local suggested they do so. They're going to go up their mine and stuff that's already disturbed and destroyed and fix it. And that's fabulous because we like our outdoors. That's why we live here. The proposal begins with restoration, but conservation groups, recreators, and the Nez Pierce tribe believe more mining isn't the answer to cleaning up this area. But Perpetua Resources will also set aside money to refill two of the pits and restore the area when mining ends after 15 years. So we have to calculate with our regulatory agencies the cost, the true cost of restoration and reclamation based on every tree that needs to be planted, based on all of the workforce that would have to come in and do that work, plus additional contingencies. Assuming that something happened to the company and we couldn't finish the work here, it would be guaranteed to be finished by that money that is set aside before the project can ever begin. History of mining at Stibnite dates back to 1899. It became a key contributor to producing materials for the Allied forces in World War II. Although the mine will primarily produce gold, antimony, one of the 35 critical minerals listed by the United States that can be used in a variety of different ways, will also be mined. The problem today is that there are no domestically mined sources of antimony. Instead, 90% of the world's antimony is controlled by China, Russia, and Tajikistan. But history of mining makes it difficult for opponents of the mine to get behind a project of this magnitude that would operate near the headwaters of the East Fork of the South Fork of the Salmon River, which eventually joins other rivers before making it to the Pacific Ocean. This project has too many unanswered questions for us to support its moving forward. We just don't see how this project is good for Idaho's environment. Perpetual Resources say they represent a new generation of mining, and they were pretty transparent with me. They answered every question that I asked of them, and that was pretty substantial given that it took about four hours to drive in and out of the mine site. Steve Dent, Idaho News 6.